speciality formats, uh, I think IE has been fairly well established in India. There is at least five to seven players who are doing the only IK. Many of us are still quite regional, and I think only one or two people have really gone pan India in terms of size. And I think there's still an opportunity, significant opportunity, even for new players to probably get funded and actually create stronger regional because the market's pretty large. Almost 25 to 30 percent of the consumers require some form of care. Most of it is refractive corrections, and a huge bunch of it is still in the unorganized sector. So there's a large opportunity, I think, uh, still in play, and that's kind of the reason why it makes it quite attractive for investors. And I think as more chains come up, m and is a fairly natural uh, direction that will uh, evolve as we kind of go along. I think uh, if you if you're a part of uh, the uh, sessions inside, you would have learned that most investments today that have happened in the healthcare space have not in brands, healthcare service brands, have largely happened where the delivery of the service is in tier 1 towns. I think everybody knows that there is a big market waiting in tier 2, tier 3 towns, but nobody's really kind of cracked it yet. I think from our perspective and I think why I started in eye care or healthcare was to see if we could actually solve this problem of building a a, a business that delivered good social impact, so we are only focusing on uh, tier 2, tier 3 towns. And we are trying to build a business and a model that showcases that we can actually take affordable eye care down down to the village level. So I think that's our real focus and uh, our strategy is really to continue to build on those two pieces which is affordable eye care in underserved markets. And I think every brand aspires to build that strong relationship of loyalty and trust with consumers. And if I was a larger brand and I was trying to do an m and I think that would be my number one criteria when I'm going for an expansion, right? To understand how trusted is this other brand that we to look at. Or I think if somebody else is looking to acquire us, I think they should be looking at exactly the uh, same thing. So I don't think there's any question, fundamental on this one. I don't think transactions will happen if there is even a sense of doubt that consumers don't trust the brand, either for practices, uh, ethics or practices that are followed or otherwise, it's unlikely that uh, people who have a long-term interest in healthcare will do deals with uh, without that level of trust uh, being available for the brand being acquired. Uh, absolutely no experience in the matter. I think just from my past experiences with m and which was not in healthcare, right? I think all the traditional challenges that any m and has, which is culture, right? how do you get integration happen, which is how do you retain or establish a sense of control, okay, given that healthcare delivery has been being run for a very long time by other people, and that's also a patient trust relationship out there. I think it's much more amplified in the case of healthcare probably than uh, in other sectors. So I think people doing m and need to be really, look I think it's much easier if the acquisition is happening on a professionally run brand or a chain which has already taken or seen certain uh, rounds of PE investment or at least VC and PE investment because I think if a company has already seen certain rounds of investment it's likely that these investors as well as the company would have probably start investing in a certain layer of professional management to come in. I think it's going to be much harder than it is going to be an acquisition or a M&A of an individual or a proprietorship uh, unit. So those I think need to be dealt more where uh, you know maybe people have to create a, a separate approach. And I've seen certain approaches where you know sometimes they don't even when they're doing acquisitions for brownfield projects, a lot of the time and effort is spent on making sure that the promoter of the old unit is working in such a way so that he's be happy but still certain level of control or this one can be established. So I think they're hard to structure and I think it requires a lot of uh, dealing with the primary player to make the distribution happen. But I think as healthcare, the organized chain starts to go in, there is going to be a lot of these brownfield opportunities and I think it's going to be very important for the chains to crack. I think if guys who are going to be good at cracking it are I think going to do better than the ones who don't.
I think first thing I think you ought to realize is that uh, India still has a huge supply side problem in healthcare. So I think the point where a large entity will gobble up small entities is unlikely to happen because the market is nowhere near saturation for patients. Everybody has ample patients to kind of treat or deal with and the market can still take reasonable amount of supply as, it, uh, as I see it today. So I am not at least, uh, I think growth strategies could hinge on acquisitions or growth but it's unlikely that a single brand will come and gobble up so much that people are going to shut shop because I think the market is still very very large. very clear that uh, we're going to focus on uh, organic growth with the capital that we have raised. So we're looking to set up green fields. We are open to certain brown fields, but I think the terms and the, this one with the on coming, onboarding doctor has to be something that we are comfortable with. But uh, we're seeing enough opportunities today to stay in the green field area. We want to get to the point where culturally, processes-wise, because we're still a small company, we want to have that very strong before we consider doing larger acquisitions.